just yesterday morning They let me know you were gone Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you I walked out this morning And I wrote down this song I just can't remember who to send it to I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I... Well, Chris, it's going to be a big game for both teams. Uh, both teams ranked in the top five in Louisville. What an outstanding team. Asia Darrell on everybody's list of who's going to win the Player of the Year award. She is somebody that is a dominating guard in the conference and in the country. But she's not the only weapon they have. High down, playing really well. She's a double-double machine. And they've got some other great players around her. So just a really good team and definitely uh, going to be a very difficult game for us on the road. Well, talk about um, Sunday night. You guys traveled to uh, Georgia Tech, and you had a uh, you know the, the weather and everything around there. You guys had a tough flight back home. So, how's the team doing right now? We're doing well. You know, we we got in the air a little bit late, but we were on our way to South Bend, and just as we were about to land, they diverted us to Detroit. We were forced to spend the night and then bust home, and actually didn't get home to about five o'clock the next day. But um, small, small in comparison to some of the adversity we faced with all the injuries we've had this year, down to seven scholarship players now. So um, we had a we had a good practice when we returned, and looking forward to another good one tomorrow. Yeah, I was watching you guys last week when you guys played uh, Miami, and uh, I see like Miami has been uh, a tough team right now. They're getting better each year. Yeah, I'll tell you, this league is so difficult. We, we had a really good game with Syracuse. Uh, they just beat Florida State. We had a great game against Miami. Uh, they're, they're a team that's they're young, but they're so talented. Everybody in this league is capable of winning, especially on the home floor, so you've got to be ready every night. Well, talk, uh, women's basketball has now, you guys have four quarters, right, instead of two halves. Yeah. Uh, this is, what, what, the second year of doing it, pretty much? Yeah, I think it's a lot more exciting. I think the end of the quarter, you've got a, a chance to, to get the last shot of the quarter. There's one less timeout, so I think the game goes along a little bit more. We're shooting two free throws instead of the one-on-one, so there's, the scoring is up across the country. Uh, I think it's made the game a little more exciting. And, of course, all the high school players are used to playing quarters. The NBA, WNBA, everybody plays quarters. I'm not sure why we ever played halves. Yeah, it seems like why does the uh, women's game they're they're doing four quarters and the men still have two ha- uh, you know two halves? Why why can't well, they I, don't, I don't know why that is uh, because you know in international basketball with USA basketball uh, everyone else is in the on the quarter system, so I think it's easier for the high school players to adjust to it. Yeah. So uh, you guys are practicing this afternoon, or are you guys um, starting to uh, or how you what's the practice schedule for you guys right now? We practiced yesterday. We're off today, and uh, we'll practice tomorrow and then head out. Well, Coach McGraw, I appreciate you taking some time with me this afternoon. It was uh, I talked to you a couple years ago down there in Charlotte when uh, the whole network thing, doing for the ACC network and all that stuff. It was good to talk to you, and it's good to talk to you again. And I, I, good luck, and I hope to talk to you more down the road. I hope so too. All right, thank you so much. Have a good day. All right, bye. How's everything going down there? You guys doing okay? Okay. Yeah, it's nice to warm here. Yes, it's warm here too. I'm pretty happy. <laughs> cool. Does this sound okay? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. I have Grant here. Okay. All right, let me hand it over. Okay. Hello. Hey, Grant. How you doing, man? Hey, how are you? Doing great. I'm here with Grant Riley uh, from Tra- College of Charleston. Uh, they are playing tomorrow night against uh, Northeastern. After you guys had a. Uh, road trip last weekend to Drexel and Towson. So uh, what did you guys learn from you know, the, the road trip from you guys, uh, from playing in Philly and in, on Sunday playing in Towson? Um, I think we just learned we got to come off a better start. Uh, we started off slow in both games, kind of dug ourselves a hole. So the second half, we picked up our energy and kind of played more like ourselves, but just starting off on the wrong track didn't make us dig a deep hole. Mm-hmm. Well, this uh, Thursday night you're playing against you're at home against Northeastern. What do you? I know you had a couple of days to, uh, you know, regroup and school started and all that stuff. Well, what do you see uh, getting ready for Northeastern? Uh, just these couple of days of practice have been good for us. Uh, we needed a couple of days to just prepare for somebody. Uh, being back at home, I think helps a lot. So I think we'll be ready to play. 
Well, just talk about uh, back to Sunday's game. You know, talk about the uh, the game against Towson. and you guys were a little chippy. You know, a lot of technical fouls and all that stuff. Is that that's just part of what you guys play against? You play against a Towson squad. Yeah, something like that. But, uh, a lot of it is on us, though. Our composure has to be better. Uh, we picked up a couple technical fouls. I don't think we should have gotten. Uh, just talk about your season so far. Uh, just what do you like about your season? You know, playing you know basketball. Uh, I'm feeling more comfortable this season than last year. Uh, obviously, that comes with experience, but just trying to play the game the right way and do whatever I can to help the team. And let's uh, talk about your coach, Coach Grant. I talked to him last Wednesday on the show. Uh, yeah, he seems like a nice, quiet guy. He's very superstitious. So what kind of superstitious stuff does he do? Uh, well, one big, one big one for our program is every every game day during shoot around, we shoot half court shot. So that's kind of been our tradition for a while since I've been here. So that's one thing. Okay, that's cool. Well, Grant, I know you're a busy man. I appreciate you joining me this afternoon, and I hope you and uh, your team good luck tomorrow night against Northeast Northeastern and. I hope to see you more down the road. All right, thank you, sir. Being the All right, man. Thanks, buddy. Have a great day, okay? All right, you too. All right, bye. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Gail Donnelly.
when I get stoned Na 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 Afternoon, appreciate it. How's everything going up there? Uh, things are good. You sort of warm up up here. How about before you are? Uh, pretty warm. It's getting down here. It's like 41 degrees, but thank God. You know, thank God the warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now we've had uh, some cold, some snow, some ice. Our kids are actually out of school today, or had up, had up, out of school. They got early yesterday, out of school Friday, two hour delay today, so it's uh, a little crazy, but nice to see the sun out. Well, uh, the reason I was calling is we're going to talk about the uh, the Drexel game this Thursday. You got to, you got to play right. Drexel. So, uh, what do you see getting ready for that game against Drexel? Because, like you said, your kids were, you know, they had a half day and you know off today. What are you going to do about practice? Are you still expecting to do it? Yeah, I mean that's something that we're you know we're trying to figure out. I think it's important to, to obviously piece our guys through through the season. And you know, my time spent with Coach Bray, I thought he was a master. Uh, you know, pacing a team through five months. So we took off yesterday. We'll come back and have a really good workout today, practice-wise. Probably go for about an hour and 15 minutes hard, and then we'll scale it back tomorrow. You know, we'll lose that football mentality day before a game, kind of scout report, shoot, walk through, drive around stuff, and then be ready to play Thursday night. So, you know, it's an interesting start to the season because we're used to playing Thursday, Saturdays. This past weekend, it was Friday and Sunday, so it was one less day of uh, prep and rest and, and skill work. So, uh, we're going into today. We'll have a light workout tomorrow and be ready to compete on Thursday night. And talk about Drexel. I know they have a new coach. You know, loser, loser friend got let go. And now you have the guy from Army there. You know, so uh, just talk about his, his uh, the guy the coach. Well, you know, he and I came in at the same time, so I think for us, you're trying to build a program and, and continuing to develop and, and change a culture, and you know, he's got a good group of young guards. That's the one thing that's impressed with me, watching them play, is they can spread you out, and the kid Kirkley is a talented kid, can score, was on the all-rookie team, they added a transfer from Missouri, and Jermaine Isabel, who's a, a talented kid, leads him in scoring, can be in multiple ways, uh, so we're going to have to be really good. You know, I like where we're going, I feel like our team is continually to develop and improve as a basketball team. Uh, and we're playing a lot of young guys, similar, similar to Drexel, so this is a rivalry for us. I'm learning about it. I remember watching uh, from afar back in the day the Drexel Delaware uh, rivalry games. Like Coach Bray was here with Bruiser Flint and when they were in the American East. So uh, this, this is an important game for us to see if we can get above 500 in the league. And it's important, obviously, to take care of home court uh, in this league. Do you feel like you have an advantage because you said you watched uh, this uh, this rivalry from afar with, you know, Coach Bray was there and, and you know, does it feel like you know all about these rivalries in, in this league? Um, you know, I have great respect for the Colonial League. Um, you know, I remember watching it when they were in the Americas and the Colonial, like a really, really good basketball conference. I don't know if it's an advantage. I'm familiar with Drexel being a Philly guy. One of my best friends from high school. My high school teammate went there to play for Billy Harry and, and uh, Steve Seymour when they were coaches there. So I'm familiar with this basketball program. Uh, again, it, it's actually taking over a new program like I am where you're trying to build it. You're building it the right way. You're setting your culture and your standards, your expectations for your team. You know, uh, you can't turn it around in a year. You know, we're almost building the day. So we're just trying to gradually build a solid foundation and I think we're um, I think we're both on the right track it's going to take some time but you know, he's got a good young talented team that's do we that they're still trying to learn and figure it out and you know, hopefully we can um, you know, again handle our business on our home floor and get to uh, you know, get to two wins in a row well I talked to your old uh, boss yesterday Coach Bray on the uh, ACC teleconference call and uh, he had a lot of good yeah. praises about you uh, what was it like playing against him coaching against him uh, this year it was surreal. Um, you know, I think we had talked about the game for so long that when it was actually 
especially there that Saturday. It was it was emotional. You know, Mike and I have grown uh, you know grown really close over the years. He's my mentor, uh, played for him. He was my boss. I think most importantly, he's a great friend. Um, he's an unbelievable resource for me uh, as a head coach. I always try to step back and say, you know, look at take it from a perspective of how how would Coach Bray handle the situation, and I tried to soak off so much from him in the 13 years I worked for him, six in the operations division, seven as an assistant coach. I feel like I developed as a leader, as a communicator, Um, but it was surreal being on the other bench and having that on our building, a special night for our basketball program. I had a chance to recruit a lot of the guys on the current team, Um, really good friends with the coaches uh, on the staff there, and you know, Mike is He's one of the best guys in the business. Guy that does it, does it the right way. He's had unbelievable success doing it his way. He's a great uh, mentor, teacher, educator, um, and, he, and I love what he's done with that basketball program. As a former assistant, as a long, a former basketball player, uh, it's just so fun to watch um, how he's putting the red basketball back on the national map. Yeah, and also you don't hear his teams getting in trouble a lot. That's also the good thing. You hear, you hear like Louisville, you hear, you know, North Carolina, and you hear a little bit about Miami, but you don't hear anything about Notre Dame's basketball team. Never. You don't know, and I think that goes back to, uh, you know, the culture, the type of kids you have in your program, the school that you're at. Um, you know, we will, Notre Dame's not for everybody. You know, we had a small group of cool kids that we recruited. Um, you know, we had eight or ten kids on a recruiting board. You knew you were going to get three or four of them, and, and it wasn't just recruiting basketball players. It's recruiting great kids, like high-character kids, competitors, guys that come from winning basketball programs. Um, and then that, that program is kind of running itself, um, you know, where the older guys are coaching the younger guys. And I think you've seen that over the years with Mike. is get cute kids in your program. They let them play. You know, they have success. They love playing for them. And, um, you know, he's really made that into, um, you know, one of the premier basketball programs in the country. Yeah. Uh, one last question. I know this week you have sure. at home, and then you have to go down to James Madison on Sunday or Saturday or something like that? Saturday, yep. Yeah. We're right down there Saturday, yeah. yep. Just talk about that quick turnaround because you literally have to leave Friday morning or Friday afternoon to get down to JMU mm-hmm. and get ready for that game. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a quick turnaround. You know, our focus right now is Drexel right. and uh, preparing our team to play them on Thursday night. But then once that game's over, we're going to turn the page and we'll focus on JMU on Friday. We'll bust down there uh, probably mid afternoon and have a good practice here. Won't be a good turnaround. You know, um, Again, I've always had a philosophy of it's not about who we're playing, it's about what we're going to do and what our, uh, our opponent's strengths and weaknesses take them away. We focus on what we need to do to try to beat our opponent. And, uh, you know, we'll talk about that on Friday, give her some scouting report, get a light workout in Saturday morning on their floor and be ready to compete at 4 o'clock. So uh, it's exciting, I think, for our guys. It was great this past week because, you know, we got our bus kicked down Friday night against William Mary. They're a really good basketball team, but we got, we got a chance to come back. Thirty-six hours later, and compete again. And I think any competitor, I was excited to see how we came out and compete. And we got a big win, a big sweep from UNC Wilmington on Sunday to get the two and two in the lead. So you got to focus on taking care of it. It's Thursday night. If we do that, we turn the page quickly. You talk about JMU uh, on Friday and Saturday, and you compete uh, mid afternoon on Saturday. Well, Coach, I thank you for joining me this afternoon. I know you're a busy man. I hope, I hope practice goes well, and I hope to see you. Hopefully, I might make a trip up here to see you guys. Hopefully, the weather is good. Or I'll see you down here at Towson. So, yeah. All right. Tell me, Chris. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye. You too. Take care. Bye. Hey, Chris. This is Mark Eagles. How are you? Thanks for coming. All right. Hey, Ryan. How you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for coming on uh, this afternoon for a free tape interview. I'm here with Ryan Allen, who is a freshman. From Bowie, Maryland, up there playing for the Blue Hens in basketball. So, Ryan, thanks for joining us today. Uh, just talk about uh, your season so far playing uh, college basketball up in uh, Newark. I'm really cool. We had uh, ups and downs. I mean, I feel like we're a very really young team. We're still learning how to play together. And I think, like, these last couple of games, we kind of figured it out, kind of got from the offensive side. Mm-hmm. And like we playing great team defense, and like we can go nowhere but from here. Personally, I feel like I've been playing, I've been playing pretty well. Mm-hmm. I've been seeing my expectations, except for my own expectations. I feel like I can play a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Uh, helping my team rebound, help my team. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Better to give us a shot. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you guys play Thursday night against Drexel. So uh, you know, I talked to the coach yesterday. You guys were, uh, you know, he's, you guys are having a light practice today. Uh, what do you uh, what do you see in uh, film study with uh, Drexel? Well, we haven't we haven't really went over a lot of film with him, but we watched a few clips from him yesterday. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're a very talented team. I have a good coach. They have a good style of play, fast style of play. Uh, we just got to match the intensity. And we just got we just got to play hard in baseball, and we should come out with a uh, win today. Mm-hmm. Well, you're a kid from. Uh... From Bowie, Maryland. Uh, so, how did uh, Delaware get on your radar you know, to play college basketball? Uh, my very first high school coach on my TV here is a freshman in the uh, The head coach, he just became a coach, the assistant coach for Delaware when Coach Eagles became it. Mm-hmm. Coach Corey McCray. Oh, wow. And I have a close relationship with him. Cool. That's awesome. Great. So, what are your goals for uh, this year, your first year playing college basketball? Would you? Like to do, and what 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 is your goals for yourself? Um, just basically playing well enough to help my team win a lot of games, and in the near future, like I want to go deep into the playoffs. Like, first, I want to make the NCAA tournament. Like, my team needs me to like have like, like a lot of rebounds, a lot of points, a lot of assists. Like I'm gonna do that. I don't really have like personal goals until I feel like anything personal is gonna come like, if we win the games. Nice. One last question. Who did you, uh, I know a lot of kids grew up playing basketball and like yourself. Who did you grow up watching in the NBA or college? Who do you model yourself by? I grew up watching players like James Harden because he's a lefty. Mm-hmm. Uh, players that I like, that I like, well, like Michael Williams, like Jared Smith, like Steven Smith, like those are my favorite players. Mm-hmm. Well, Ryan, I appreciate you joining me today. I hope you guys have a good uh, walkthrough or quiet practice today, and I hope to see you uh, probably when you come down to Towson in a couple of weeks. That'll be great for you to be back in the state of Maryland, and you're probably going to get a lot of family members there, probably, right? Yeah, that'd be fun. All right, all right. All right, buddy. Thank you so much, and enjoy your rest of your week, and good luck tomorrow night. All right, thank you, thank you, buddy. Folks, thanks for listening to us here on Herbert Fab Sports Radio. Uh, at the half, I've been uh, let's give you some scores around the uh, college in the ACC. At the half, number seven Duke all over Pittsburgh right now, fifty to twenty-four. Uh, that's the score. What's going on right now up there? Let's give you the other scores around here. Um, let's see how Notre Dame Notre Dame is playing. And we're trying to get the score full scoreboard here. This. Sorry about that, folks. Uh, thanks for tuning us in here. It's been a uh, a beautiful day, you know, weather-wise. The weather's getting better around here. So let's go to the ACC here. All right. We're trying to bring up the scoreboard here. If <laughs> the internet's working. Um, well, if you're waiting for the Louisville's coach uh, Jeff Waltz to call us, he uh, not available. You know, I guess he got you know got himself ready for tomorrow night's game. So we'll uh, hopefully we'll get him on during the rest of the year. So you know, the remainder of the year. Um, at the half down in Atlanta, uh, Mike Bray is trailing by ten to Georgia Tech. That's it. That's on the on ESPNU. At the half, Virginia Tech has a forty-five to thirty lead over Wake Forest. They're in Wake Forest. So we'll you know have that. And then at 9 o'clock, the only ACC game still out there is Louisville versus Florida State. So uh, um, we're going to give you some interviews we did this week. Uh, folks, if you're listening to us here in Baltimore or you're listening to us in in uh, Columbia or Cockeysville or even out of state, you know, in Virginia or Harrisonburg, or if you're listening to us in Fort Washington, we'll give you the... Uh, 
Yeah, Fort Washington. So, hold on there. Yeah, if you're listening to us in Fort Washington, Maryland, Annapolis, Ashburn, Virginia, or Windsor Locks, Connecticut, that's where it used to be the old uh, uh, Greater Hartford Open. Yeah, from bowling. That was pretty cool. We have that as well. Or, or if you're listening to us, uh, you know, out of the country, you know, in the United Kingdom, or if you're listening to us in Canada, Italy, France, India, Panama, Greece, or the United Arabs, you can always find us. We're on the internet. No matter where we are. So, and also, we're also on iHeartRadio. So, if you want to listen to us on iHeartRadio, you can get off, you know, if you miss this show tonight, you can go to iHeartRadio and listen to us anytime. So, uh, here is an interview we have with Pat Scary, the head coach of Towson, previewing the game against Hostra tomorrow night down at the, at the CQ Arena. So, here it is. Hey, Coach Pat, how you doing? Uh, let's talk about Hostra on Thursday night. What do you see with them when you're into that game? Because uh, you're home for the last time for maybe for a couple of games before you hit the road again. Well, they're, they're explosive. Uh, I mean, Joe Mahalik does an unbelievable job. Uh, you know, they've got arguably the best scorer in the country from just the right form. But I, I don't know if he's guardable. Uh, I mean, the Pemberton was right there for rookie of the year in the league. And then you got as good a rebounder as you can find in, in Goosty. So, you know, how do you slow them down? How do you keep them off the glass? And then how do you slow those guys down that can score on the perimeter? And, and Roman scores at all three levels. So for us, it's going to start with the things we preach, you know, defense and rebounding. And then um, you know, we expect them to play us a whole lot of zone, and we've got to be ready to attack that zone wisely. And just talk about the last two games at home. What you like about uh, your team after finally getting off that long road trip that you, you know, before Christmas and after Christmas, you know, you guys are home now for, you know, this is the last game of the homestand. Yeah, we obviously everyone likes being at home. We were on the road for a while. And people have been getting hard. That is, um, you know, we're going to be on the road for a while. But, you know, I thought, uh, I, I like Sunday that we came out very, very locked in uh, against what I would consider obviously the, uh, the league favorite and a, and a postseason team in, in Charleston. And we came very locked in defensively. Um, and I think if we can do that, we're going to find ourselves right in the mix most nights moving forward. Hopefully that message has resonated with, with our guys. Well, good luck on Thursday. Thanks. All right, that's Pat Scary, uh, Coach of Towson, talking about tomorrow night's game against uh, Hostra. And here is the post-game interviews from this past Sunday when they played the College of Charleston right here on Herb Defense Sports Radio. Well, no, uh, it was our fourth team. We went at home. And Coach will like second period. Yeah, look, I'm really, really proud of our guys, uh, their resiliency over, you know, after – Long trip. Uh, they just they just really rose up. I can't say I'm surprised because we've got a talented, tough group, and I thought we played that Towson type of defense uh, today, and, and, and it, it showed. I mean, the job that Al did on Brantley, uh, Brian did on Joe Chili was exceptional. That's what he's been doing. He's been doing all year, and I think when your point guard and your, your post play that well, it sets the stage for everyone else. But it was a great team win. I'm re- really proud of our kids. We beat a very quality. Very, very quality club today. As was you played all year in the first half. Um, yeah, I mean, any time you get up 19 against a team that I would consider to be a, much like a self postseason team, you, you, you take it. So we have it in us. Um, like I said, these guys, when, when they stick together and they really lock in on something, we get a chance to be a really good ball club. And that's what they, that's what they did today. I couldn't, I couldn't be more proud of them. And they were extending defense, pressing a little bit in the second half. We got down to seven or eight. Did you start going inside a bit more? And I thought our guys did. I probably didn't do a good enough job with us earlier. Uh, I, I, I wanted to probably ran a couple of longer sets. We had a couple open threes. I mean, Jordan missed two threes. Mike missed one. It's hard. Jordan's shooting 50% from three, and they were wide open, you know. Um, and, you know, they're going to make a run at some point. It's hard to, hard to I think, sometimes play with that type of league. But I thought um, Zane had a couple good drives. You got the foul line. You saw Brian make a good play when they went to a little bit of zone, dumped it inside. I think Justin scored it. Al had a couple stick backs. We, we were really good around the basket today, I thought. Coach, uh, do you recall the score of your score of your game down there? <clears throat> the, 
was 7362, is that right? How about that? No. Um, yeah. I like this result better, I can tell you that. Uh, I mean, do you feel like, uh, you know, obviously you guys aren't anywhere close to the end of the conference play, but do you feel like with, when these two teams play to their potential, they're probably the two best in the conference? You know what, I know they're really good, and we could be really good, but I'm looking around our league, we got six teams in the top 150 in the country. I don't think, uh, yeah, uh, RPI, okay. I don't think that's ever happened uh, for the conference. So there's a lot of good teams. We're going to enjoy this one today, and then <coughs> don't worry about the next one. But this is, um, we play twice in eight days. Is um, You know, there's not a lot of holiday cards being sent to each other, so we, we knew it was going to be a battle today. What you talked uh, last game about just the bizarre nature of having to face them so soon. What you know, kind of side effects, I guess, did that have in today's game? Well, I mean, our guys are ready. We've had some, you know, uh, it's been a rivalry, and they're a terrific team, and Earl does a great job. And, um, you know, so our, our guys wanted this one today. They, they wanted it. And, you know, if, we, if it works out, we play each other again, then it, you know, we'll, we'll prepare. They'll prepare, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully we'll ball bounce our way. Can you talk about your bench? We have points off the bench today. Better. Yeah, we've always said it. And that was with Deshaun not having a great, a usual good game because of foul trouble. So we got nine guys. We have trust in all of our guys. Um, I probably should have went a little longer, with uh, more with Justin and Dennis, but I just thought that Al and Eddie were so good defensively around the rim. Eddie don't look tall, but he makes some plays. Where he blocks shots and challenges people. He's a strong guy. He can be a pain in the rear end, but he's a competitive son of a gun, and, and he brought it today. How, like, important were these two games for you here, like, at home, these back-to-back -back wins right after that four games? Yeah, huge. I mean, home games, you want to, you want to be in the race, you can't lose home games, you got to try to wait to win a handful on the road, and then... You know, we uh, we had a couple that we, we, we didn't get, but like I said that the other night, if we've learned from that, then that'll pay dividends for, dividends for us later. These guys are incredibly locked in. We, we we knew yesterday we didn't have to bring them back last night for an extra one. They were incredibly locked in yesterday. Now, I know you're not the only person to guard, guard Brantley, but did you guard him differently the second time around? Uh, no, I... Uh... It's hard to explain, but, like, when we play Charleston, they're a huge rivalry. And uh, I know playing Brantley is, like, we have mutual respect, and I, I just love guarding him. So, um, in the first game, he definitely got hot. He got hot, and um, it just they played small. We just weren't we weren't used to it. But uh, this time around, we've seen everything that they were trying to do, and uh, we just able to, like, to lock in. I was just able to lock in. Well, Brian, anything differently this time around defensively or what you guys played them? Um <clears throat> I just know we were more uh, competitive than usual. Like I felt like we came in with a chip on our shoulder, and uh, I just know as a team we just came in and we wanted to compete. That was the main thing. We just wanted to play them as hard as possible. So, is the players an advantage or disadvantage to play them so soon in eight days? Uh, I don't think it would matter. I think it would, it would be the same. If we play them. Zane, uh, you know, for as evenly matched as you guys are. If you do meet a third time postseason, what is going to be the difference, do you think? Uh, at the end of the day, who's tougher? Uh, we both talented. We both going to give it our all. At the end of the day, it's who, who won it the most. Who's going to who's gonna make those 50-50 balls? That's all it is. Who's going to make their free throws? Who's tougher at the end of the day? Uh, you know, uh, I mean, I usually don't, don't talk about that stuff, but uh, nothing, not, just, just just some personal stuff, nothing, absolutely nothing negative. Um, so, no, no, you know, nothing negative. That's one thing I would, I would say, just just some, uh, just, just a personal decision. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> <coughs> All right, folks, that was Towson postgame right there uh, from, from Sunday's win over College of Charleston. Uh, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, we'll get uh, Don 
Munson, who does the uh, voice for Towson, for Clemson football and basketball. He'll talk about basketball because Clemson's playing a game against NC State tomorrow night on uh, ESPN at 9 o'clock. So we'll be right back. You are listening to the Sports Desk here on Herbert Femme Sports Radio. Here on Herbert Femme Sports Radio. We'll be right back. Just yesterday morning, they let me know you were gone. Suzanne, the plans they made put an end to you. I walked out this morning and I wrote down this song. I just can't remember who to send it to. I've seen fire and I've seen rain. I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again Alright folks, we're, uh, we're live here on Herb Event Sports Desk. Uh, we're changing to, uh, to Clemson basketball. We have Don Munson, who does the voice of both Towson, uh, Clemson football and now he's doing basketball. So first thing is, let's talk about the football team. Uh, tough loss to Alabama there in the, in the uh, Sugar Bowl. So how was uh, how was his flight back from uh, um, New Orleans? Uh, well, the flight back was okay. It wasn't as good as it was the year before, that's sure, coming back home from uh, from Tampa. But, uh, you know, I think that Clemson Nation has kind of absorbed that, and they're, you know, they're ready to, to, to move along. It wasn't a bad year because there, were, there wasn't hardly anybody – Counting us on being in the playoffs, that, that was for sure. So for us to be able to get back there uh, and retool in the way that we did offensively, uh, I think there's a lot about the program that Coach Swain's built. Exactly. Well, now you're doing basketball. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, Coach Braswell is playing. Uh, they're going to NC State against a very good NC State, NC State squad that beat Duke last weekend. So talk about that game on Thursday night. Well, you know, uh, it's, it's really a strange situation because Clemson and NC State just played on December the 30th. But that was in Clemson. Mm-hmm. Clemson won that game by 16, 78 to 62. Uh, and the college just did a really good job of, of just defensively putting the, the clamps on NC State offensively. And, and particularly points in the paint. Clemson had a 44 to 24 advantage uh, in points in the paint against the, the Wolfpack of NC State. But, it, you know, like most teams, they're – it's a totally different beast when you come and you play them on their home floor. Like you said, last time out, they were victorious over, over the Duke Blue Devils and did it in a big fashion. So you know that that means that they'll probably have a few more fans that will show up tomorrow here in Raleigh. And uh, that place will be pumped and ready to go for a, a 9.05 tip-off. Yeah. Well, you, uh, the basketball team is doing really well this year. They're ranked 19th in the uh, top 25. Just talk about the uh, – I know you were doing a lot of football, but also I heard you when I was down in Charlotte, you were doing some basketball as well. So uh, just talk about both football, you know, and, you know, you did football and now basketball. Just talk about the basketball team. Well, this basketball team is a club that uh, the chemistry has just been unbelievable uh, with, with this team. And I think a lot of that goes back – they had an August trip where they went to Spain – and they were gone to Spain for about nine days. Got to play three games. They had a fourth one that was scheduled, but it was canceled because the. You remember when they had the attacks there right. in Barcelona? It actually happened right in front of their hotel. Ooh. Uh, but, but it's really kind of strange because in 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 kind of a, in a strange way that incident that happened in Barcelona while they were there, I think even melded the team even that much more because all of a sudden they realized just how much they cared about one another. Uh, because there were there were some guys that were and not everybody knew where everybody was, and so it took them a little bit of time to get everybody gathered together. Everybody was healthy, thank goodness, no one was hurt. Um, but I think it kind of made them realize just just how much they liked one another, how much they depended upon one another, and I think in a strange way that it's really helped them uh, in this basketball season. Obviously, when you've got five guys that are averaging in double figures, where your top guy is at fifteen is at fifteen five and the lowest guy in that double figures is at 11-5. Very balanced scoring. And Clemson's been able to just kind of get it done both outside and inside so far so far this season. But tomorrow will, will be a big, big test against the Wolfpack. 
Yeah, on Saturday they you guys played they played Louisville and I guess I talked to the coach uh, Coach Brad the other day about them uh, gelling in overtime because I know last year they had a hard time finishing games in overtime. Yeah, we had to you know play an extra five minutes to take care of uh, the Louisville Cardinals and in that contest and Louisville having gone through everything that they've gone through uh, you know since before the basketball season really got even cranked up and when I say that I mean like back in September and. In October, with everything that, that happened to that program, give them a lot of credit because that's still a very good basketball team. They came in and they played extraordinarily hard, tied at, at 55 when we go into overtime. So the other team has done a whole lot offensively, and all of a sudden, you know, both teams kind of exploded in the five minutes of overtime. Clemson scored 19 and Louisville scored 14, but but uh, Clemson was able to come up with 15 steals in the game. Marquise Reed was huge mm-hmm. for the Tigers down the stretch and, and able to pick up that that third win in the ACC and stay undefeated at 3-0. Well, talk about this league. It seems like every night there's a different team that could come out and beat anybody in this league. It seems like every year the, the, there are teams who are down the bottom will come back later in the year and they, they'll give a run in the tournament. It, 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 seems like, it seems like every year in the ACC basketball for men, you know, there's somebody who's a surprising team. Well, I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons that this league is, I think, by most, is considered to be the, the best that there is in, in college basketball because the depth of the league is is just incredible. I mean, take a, take a look at Clemson. You know, Clemson this year was picked to finish, what, 13th, 14th, something like that in, in the league. And right now, as we talk right now, they sit at top, uh, actually second place in the league standings because uh, Virginia just won a game last night to move to 4-0. Mm-hmm. And, of course, they're in the top three in the country. But here's Clemson at 3-0, and still undefeated. Notre Dame is another one of the undefeated teams, although they're playing – in Atlanta right now and trailing uh, against Georgia Tech in uh, that ball game. So it may just be Virginia and, and Clemson after tonight that are the only two undefeated teams inside the ACC. And I think that uh, that just speaks volumes uh, for what uh, for what the depth of this league is because you're right, anybody at any time can rise up and fight you in this league. And I always say it's like a bus. People in this league, they're like a bus. They'll run over you, and if they have the opportunity, they'll put it in reverse run over you again, and then whack you one more time. Yeah. Uh, that, that's what you better be ready to go when you play in, in this league each and every night. Yeah, I'll just, I will just give you an update. They're only down by one to Georgia Tech and Notre Dame, so that's pretty good. They, they were down by ten and at the half. So that Georgia yeah, Tech squad yeah, so, is pretty good. And they're making a comeback. They're doing what Notre Dame does, and that's what happens in this league as well. You know, you get, it's not uncommon to see teams now, because of the three-point shot being down you know, 15, 18, maybe even 20 points, but because of that three-point arc, you can come back in a hurry. Yeah. Well, Don, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoy that broadcast tomorrow night. You know, on the Clemson Sports Radio Network, you guys are doing a great job. I heard you do a, game, a basketball game when I was down there for the uh, the ACC football you know championship. And I guess you drove right back to Clemson the night uh, that morning to do a game. Yeah, that's the best job on campus, brother. <laughs> it's the best job on campus. Love every minute of it. All right. Well, good luck, and I hope to talk to you down the road. All right, thank you so much. That's Don Munson from uh, uh, Clemson Football and and Basketball right here on Herbert Femme Radio. We'll be right back. Now we're going to get some interviews we did this week. Yes, we, we do other interviews as well. So we talked to the Clemson coach, Coach Brad Brunswell, who's going to coach against NC State tomorrow night. And then we have Coach Mike Bray, who I talked to, uh, you know, the coach from Notre Dame. Uh, we'll talk to him right after that. And then we'll finish up the show with Earl Grant, the head coach of the 
College of Charleston, who we had on the show last week. Uh, folks, join us next week on the show. We'll start at, we'll probably going to be starting at 6.45 or 7 around there. We'll start a little bit earlier if somebody, you, know, you can't get any of our guesses on the show. But uh, we'll, we'll cover some great, uh, we'll have some interviews from some women's basketball and some men's basketball. And we'll also, we'll, we'll talk to the PBA, uh, you know, the Professional Bowlers Tour, too. So any sport we got here on Herb Fan Sports Radio, we'll do, uh, we'll cover it every Wednesday night starting at 6.45 right here on the sports desk. So uh, here is um, the coach from uh, Clemson right now. Thanks, Brad. Hey, Coach Brad. How you doing? We're fine, thanks. Uh, just talk about your team. You guys uh, came back, uh, had a tough game against Louisville. Is that something that you guys, uh, you know, be coming back and winning that game in overtime is something that you guys are probably going to hopefully have that in coming around tournament time in March? Yeah, you know, we're proud of the way we won that game because we didn't play as well offensively. And, uh, again, I think Louisville had something to do with that. I thought they played well. Um, certainly their length and athleticism uh, is a factor on the defensive end. Uh, and I thought they, they, you know, I thought both teams really competed. I thought both teams really geared up ready to play and, and played extremely hard. And, and uh, you know, sometimes you can have games where your offense doesn't go well and you got to find other ways to win and if you're going to be good. Uh, and last year's team for us struggled a little bit with that. And this year's team has done a little better job of hanging in there uh, and hoping that our offense eventually clicked. And, and uh, you know, it kind of clicked in the overtime, but it, it really took a long time for it to, to kind of get to that point. And, uh, you know, again, I think our guys are, uh, are really defensive-minded in nature in, in, uh, in this year's team in terms of what we're trying to do. They understand that's, that's what we need to get better at. We've done a better job of coaching that. And, and uh, I think the other thing is, too, that you know, I think when we, when we substitute, I do think we bring in some guys that defend well. Mark Donnell is a big, strong, physical post player uh, that has experience. Uh, David Starr is a very defender and a big, long, big athlete. Um, you know, so I feel like, you know, Mir Sims is a freshman that can come in with a big, strong body and is physically ready to play. And so I think when we substitute, all those guys may not be as good offensive players as our starters. I do feel like our, our defense stays strong uh, and sometimes even gets better. Mm-hmm. And tell us what's the early assessment of playing NC State. You know, because NC State, you guys play on Thursday night. So what do you see early with uh, the preparation for that game? Well, I they played great uh, against Duke uh, the other night. had a phenomenal win. Um, you know, it's not like everybody played well. Cohen Dorn made huge shots. Braxton Beverly uh, was terrific off ball screens. Uh, Gert Stevin, you know, Abu, Ben Freeman, I mean, they have big, strong physical side. They're excellent rebounders. Uh, Kevin's got them playing well, playing hard. Um, you know, I, I just feel like they're a team that when they're really playing well, they can play with anybody in our league as, as evidenced by the way they played the other night. Uh, we know that playing uh, at their place, it's going to be an electric atmosphere. And, and uh, you know, we're going to have to play extremely well. We're going to play extremely hard. We're going to have to be physical. We're going to have to Good job on the glass uh, in the game to win. Thanks, Chris. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Brad. How you doing? 